allow that the words of a mouth and the meditation upon the words that come from you, God be acceptable. Amen. For those of you who might have heard about my name, I want to repeat, I'm Elijah Mwandila, a new minister here at Trinity, as well as McGregor. Friends in Christ, the long word is over, and we are here now in Canada. We thank God for the warm reception from the time we arrived up until now. We thank God for the call to ministry and the amazing tapestry of God, which opened a new ministry opportunity at such a time as this. We are looking forward to connecting with you all and possibly making new friends as we continue to serve God and humanity in this place. Reflecting on the process of our relocation to here, it tells us a lot about God's presence in our time and lives. Time and again, we are communicating so that we would update each other on the progress of our immigration processes and our travel plans. When we finally arrived at the airport in Winnipeg, we received a wonderful welcome from the team that was waiting for us, seeing the placards, the Mwandila family. And that to us reflected the presence of God. God's manifestation at that time is an epiphany on its own and confirmed to us that indeed the long wait is over. Reflecting on this reading, along with other passages, leads us to ponder on what it looked like, looked like to wait for something precious and, and the relief that comes when you get it and the responsibility that comes along with it. I can imagine how it was for the first century followers of Jesus who waited, who waited upon the reign of God. Friends, they waited for the Messiah to come and liberate them from the oppressive regime. Interestingly, this is what Mark is presenting to his readers. Mark explains that the announcement of God's inbreaking into the history and lives of God's people happened in Galilee. And so Mark is particular in a way about the place it is in Galilee that Jesus preached the good news, the gospel of God. Understanding this announcement in its context is significant for us today. Reading it from the Greek version, it gives more detail to the nature of the gospel. It tells us to be the gospel from God, the gospel about God, and the gospel of God. This connects well with the message that Jesus preached. Jesus said, the time is fulfilled and the reign of God is at hand. Jesus ministers to people that hoped for emancipation for some time. Amidst their worries and concerns, the message of Jesus is announced to them, is announced to the people of God, and it gives hope to the people of God in one way or another. Their worries, their concerns are taken off. The long wait for them is over. It is similar to the waiting of the people of Nineveh. They heard the word of God when we read from Jonah 3, 1 to 10. And when Jonah preached, they humbled themselves for reconciliation. We are told in the scripture that God heard their cry, and relented from destroying them. The long wait was over, and God brought new hope and new life for humanity. The coming of Jesus into the world is the coming of God's reign. God's reign is identified with so many things 
such as inclusion, welcome, justice, equality, equity, care, love, and hope for a better, better life. Jesus himself called it the abundant life for all. God's reign comes into the world to give peace and create fellowship. Our world sadly lacks peace, love, and care, among many other things. We still get people being displaced from their lands and being disconnected from their loved ones because of civil wars in Africa, Ukrainian war, families being separated from their loved ones who have died and are still dying in the battlefront to defend the pride of the nation. The sad events in Gaza are very heart-wrenching to watch on our televisions and it's now like over 100 days of those hostilities that have brought untold sufferings on people, especially senior citizens, women and children. Our companions are hoping and waiting for the end of their terror. What do we do? We have to keep looking, hoping, hoping for the inbreaking of God's reign in our lives. Hoping the inbreaking of God's presence in the person of Jesus will still make meaning in our world. The appearance of Jesus affirms to us, beloved, that God is with us. However, this gospel comes along with a call on the people of God. It calls us to repent and believe in the gospel. I can imagine what repentance would look like today. It would be a turnaround from our participation in any form of injustice, so that we champion the reign of God. It is promoting healing and reconciliation in our communities. It is joining hands with movements that seek the good of all and promoting justice every time. It will be resigning from our passive seats and joining others in their cause for inclusion, acceptance, justice, political freedom, and access to health and education. Visiting the shut-ins, welcoming strangers, and condemning all oppressive, oppressive regimes that hinder people to experience abundant life. It is Galilee, and we cannot forget about that, as far as Mark is writing. While as Jesus was in Galilee, Jesus called Simon, Andrew, James, and John, whose job was fishing. Jesus uses something that is appealing to them. These disciples were told of the job ahead of them by using their occupation. Jesus uses this occupation as a metaphor of the job ahead of them, as disciples would learn from Jesus and experience God's reign, they will be made fishers of people. The disciples left what they were doing and joined Jesus to teach and preach about the good news. Jesus is drawing the disciples to himself because Jesus is the message of hope, message of healing, and message of reconciliation. Jesus is the message of inclusion and embodiment of God's presence. This is the good news. In Christ, salvation has come to humanity. Friends in Christ, reading further about Jesus and the disciples and understanding Mark, we get to be connected with the events of Galilee again. We discover that it is this place where Jesus gave the disciples the great commission. Reading Mark 16, verse 15, Jesus said, Go into all the world, and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. The gospel of God is not only bringing spiritual salvation, but covers the entire life of humanity and creation. Maybe that is the reason other interpreters opt to use good tidings for gospel to express 
the practical import of salvation. Mark explains how God's reign is connected to the person of Jesus and helps us to connect that with other passages of scripture. It is like this. The reign of God is fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus announces it to the church. And Jesus sends the church into the world. And we are part of that church that is sent into the world. We are sent to share God's love to the people of all races, classes, identities, or belonging. Paul, in his writing in 1 Corinthians 7, 29 to 31, encouraged the church in Corinth to express the reign of God in the present, even as they waited for the future, because the long wait is over. And God's reign and God's inbreaking into their present life is visible as they wait for it. For Paul and his contemporaries, and I guess so even in our times, God's reign and God's presence is with us every day and at different places. It is with us at coffee shops, with us at home with family and friends, with us in hospitals, when somebody comes and visits us, with us on the roads, shopping malls, and you are going with somebody and you simply hear, don't worry, it's all on me. It's all on me. Jesus calls us and sends us to share God's reign and presence into the world. We proclaim God's reign and share God's presence with others when we visit the sick, in hospitals, in senior homes, and also those living in assisted living apartments. When we also share our lives with the strangers, share our lives with the homeless people, share our lives with the ostracized. People in such places, in such situations, have been longing and longing for God's inbreaking and presence through us. Such interactions assure us of God's presence. In one way or another, we all experience God's reign and God's presence, and the long wait is over. Amen.